Hey guys and welcome to this video. Um, today I wanted to do a follow-up video on the last tutorial I created which was uh, creating a simple journal app with Ruby on Rails and we used the standard classic approach in that last video um, without using testing um, and so we created the routes, the controllers, the views, the forms, and we tried to um, plug them together to make it work. And um, it was a bit tedious. And I think uh, it's a great example to showcase uh, how it can be done in another way, which is using test-driven development, um, using a gem called Capybara and a test suite called airspec so both are uh, two gems that are very widely used in ruby on rails and you may have heard of uh, test driven development before or testing and so um, it's a um, great approach to development in general basically it um, it consists of writing how you want to, your code to behave um, first, uh, so you're writing additional code which is called a test and then you're writing uh, the normal code which is something we already did in the other video which is the controllers, the routes, the views, uh, the models and everything you're familiar with. Uh, so it just consists of adding this part actually which is the tests and this allows us to um somehow be more uh thoughtful and and more logical about how we're gonna build our application and yeah without further ado i'm just gonna start by installing uh the necessary environment so capybara and airspec um write the tests and then we're gonna see um if it's easier to rewrite the application with it um, with uh, testing. All right, so let's start by creating a new Rails app. Uh, I'll call it Simple Journal Testing. And for the database, always go with PostgreSQL, but it's not very, very uh, uh, critical actually especially in these small applications. All right, we can access our Rails application and we will, um, so I'll start by creating the database and let me open this in Visual Code Studio and, and install the right gems. So we need Capybara to create um, tests that will actually behave as a browser. So basically what Capybara is able to do is simulate the browsing on the website, click buttons and fill in forms uh, for us to make sure that everything is working as we expect it to. Um, so this is really cool and I'm gonna start by um, installing Capybara and AirSpec. So I'm just looking at the documentation So AirSpec Rails is this one, and if we go to our gem file, we're going to see we have a group in our gem file called development, and we have group test and a group development and tests, um, and this is the one where we want to um, add AirSpec Rails and also capybara which is which is gem capybara all 
So now that I have them in my gem file, I'm just gonna type bundle, which is the equivalent of a bundle install, installing gear spec, uh, and uh, probably capybara somewhere. I don't really see it, but I assume I assume it has been done. Uh, we're gonna check that actually, but first we need to configure our spec. Um, and so we added the gem, we did bundle install, and then we have to generate some configuration for our spec. We do it generate our spec install. It's gonna create some files for us. Great. Um, so we can skip this part because we are actually installing and not upgrading and uh, so i think we can go ahead and create tests um so we can so to create a test uh you go under the spec uh folder which previously in all uh, previous um versions of rails was called uh test if i remember correctly and here you can create uh so for example, if you want to create tests for controllers, you'll create controllers. And then if it's the user controller, you can uh, um, you can create a folder called users and a file called userspec.rb um, or rather users controller user controller that RB. But basically every uh, file that is uh, uh, ending with spec and it is under the spec folder uh, will be recognized as a test file for our spec. Um, for us we will need to create specific files for Capybara and I, I, it's been a while that I didn't use it so I'm just gonna check um, exactly what files I need to create um so first of all we added gem capybara now we have to to end up the configuration of capybara we need to add this line to our test helper file and our test helper file is usually um this file uh i think it's here actually that we need to add so i'm gonna remove all the comments uh, add additional requires below this line. Yes, this is where it should be. Require supporting, require supporting your B files with custom matcher spec support. Okay, we don't need this. Uh, these comments. It can be helpful to read them to understand how to configure uh, your test suit for sure. But um, right now, I'm gonna be fine by adding uh, this here so this is not for us this is because we are on rails so we don't need this uh, if I need to test JavaScript I'm not testing JavaScript right now and I'm not using Cucumber which is something else I'm using Capybara with AirSpec so actually I also need um, to add this so it's saying that I need to edit in spec helper that there be but I'm doing it in her rails helper um, it's pretty much the same because if I add something in spec helper it's it's uh, it's loaded here in this require but I can also add things directly in here it's more about uh, uh, separating uh, your configuration so that it's uh, more readable but I think for now this works as well. Um, I really don't like all these comments. It makes things hard to read. But uh, it is useful to read them uh, sometimes. But again, you can find them. You can find this information in the config in the documentations of the gem when you need them. Um, so. 
here I have my airspec configuration and here I have my general um, testing configuration and I added these two lines that I think uh, are necessary and so yeah to add testing for um, for um, our web pages as we're gonna do here uh, the um, suggested way to do this is under a folder called features so right now I don't need uh, test controllers I'm just gonna remove the, the folder I created I'm gonna create a folder called features and a file called um, journal entries spec out oh, there be so if you remember our last tutorial or maybe you, if you didn't watch it um, we created a simple journal where we could add our journal entries every day with a few prompts uh, about your to-do list for the day what you're grateful for for the day um, etc uh, what you're looking forward to in the day so it was basically three uh, these three entries and obviously the date of the of the day and so um, uh, now we have our uh, test file here um, and we're gonna start writing our test and I'm just gonna copy and paste the example first and then I will tweak it to uh, be how I want it to be for my use case so this is uh, just a description it's not really taking into account into code but I want to describe what the test is about so I'm gonna describe uh, the journal entries creation uh, feature so this is gonna um, this is gonna test all the features actually for journal entries um, and it's basically a, uh, what we call a CRUD uh, you probably familiar with this but uh, the application just does creation, reading, updating, and deleting of journal entries. So this is what we're gonna test, right? And um, we could use a user, but uh, in our application for now we don't use users. We just have journal journal entries. There is no authentication because we consider that it's a personal app. So. We could use um, we could add user management later, but for now uh, we don't need to do so. Um, and so this will probably be more like about uh, journal entries. So basically, what we do in this block is um, um, populating the database in the test environment so that we can test stuff out. Let's say, for example, I want to test that my index page contains few general journal entries and that I can effectively see them well I would not be able to do so if I don't create some journal entries in my test database here so that's why this block is here for it's to prepare the database um, so that when I execute my tests uh, we can have some information or some data to browse into and to play with right um, so here it's going to be about creating the journal entries so that will be journal entry dot create um, and we had a few fields um, so that's more like day to day and let's say I will just give very basic names for the fields um, and very uh, basic informations uh, to B and three C. Uh, so again, we don't need to complicate it for now. You get you get it. It's just to be able to understand how we can do this with testing. Um, obviously, feel free to um, have more descriptive informations here. But um, one thing that helps though is. Um, I like to uh, separate or rather present the our uh, the the functions like this when there is a lot of fields that are 
that are uh, that need to be uh, filled in so that's a bit better to read right and so we can so this will create one journal entry and we can do something like journal entry one and we could duplicate this and do journal g2 and here i'm gonna say date yesterday and i'm gonna leave this as is or maybe we can just change a little bit all right uh, there's a better way to do this with loops create many entries with loops uh, but we can um, do this later it's not uh, critical for now and so now we have our before block which prepares the database so I'm gonna write down write this down here prepare database uh, my indentation is off but uh, we can arrange it here okay it's better and so here in the it block we're gonna be more specific and start really testing um, so we're gonna describe um, a unique feature uh, we're gonna try to be as precise as possible and then we're gonna have multiple blocks like this so what I mean is that uh, we're gonna have one feature about reaching the index page and seeing the list of journal entries then we're gonna have another uh, block or scenario that will test that we can create a new entry um, and then we're gonna have another block to um, test that we can um, successfully delete an entry right so let's say that we can start describing this I can access the index page and see the list of journal entries and then I'm gonna write down two comments for the new for the next test will be I can create a new entry and I can delete an entry an entry so this will be the other blocks that we'll create later um, so here again I can describe what I'm gonna test again this is not gonna be read by uh, by the testing itself but it's more about it's like a comment so that you know what the, the test is about so I already wrote it down here but I can be uh, more specific and say it um, allows me to access a journal entries so that's more like a very specific way to say this and so to access my journal entries um, I will visit um, my index page and I want my journal entries to be on my index page and then um, so this this block is um, say is, is looking into um, HTML element called uh, with ID session so then it can fill in uh, this field into this uh, session uh, element or form um, but this example we took is not the one we really want right now what we want to test is the existence of two general journal entries in our page and so I'm gonna look at a way to do that with Capybara um, so I need the Capybara API I think this this may be it Okay, maybe not actually para documentation rails okay um, this is the same as the uh, github but here already we have more um, methods we can use
So I could use uh, something like that and verify that the page has a content with this information or um, So I'm just gonna do, uh, I'm probably gonna use this, but um, just to make sure I'm gonna make a Google research and see if there's something else. But, uh, test presence of, <laughs> those are very weird suggestions. Um, test presence of, uh, Rows, data. This is an interesting uh, uh, library that can add up on Capybara, but for now I'm not going to use it. Um, so for now I'm going to use this and I'll see later if I can improve it. But basically when we visit our page, we want to have, we want, we expect the page. Um, so I need the page element. Um, I guess it works that way as soon as we are in this block actually we have access to the page um uh, yeah i can use this as well like this so i expect the page to have the content um to actually have the content date today because there will be a row that will have um that will have the date of today and just so we can be more visual i'm actually gonna show you um how the app looks like how the app we already developed looks like um so um you can uh see what we're looking for so this is this was the app so if i visit it then We go to journal entries. So this is what it looks like. So for every entry, uh, I will have a date, first field, a second field, a third field, and those are the values that will be here. Um, so actually, let me just use these values here so that we have something more uh, specific to look for in the tests. There we go and my breakfast so that was something i had to do this day and that was something i was looking for that day and that was something i was grateful for that day right um and then here i can say for today this second video tutorial um go to the beach and then I was uh, grateful for reading a book good so now we have this information we can look for in here so we can we know that um, the page is gonna display the date of the today for the entry and date of yesterday for uh, the second entry and we can expect to have this text as well and we can have we can also expect to have this text as well right if if it shows both uh, the entries 
Um, and so what we can do from now is already see what the test is gonna say. And just so to be clear, um, this app I just created and I just created, see it is, it is, uh, there is no views, there is no views, no controllers apart from the ones that come with us by default. I didn't create anything about journal entries or any interface. This one I, I, I'm showing you is one we created last time. So I will still have to uh, create uh, the equivalent in this new app to make sure that the, the tests are passing correctly. All right. This was just showing you uh, what, what was going to get displayed on the screen later. And so let's try and run our test now. Um, so to do that, I think I can use airspec and just, um, go to our spec file folder and look for the specific test. And it's this one. And there you go. So we were able to execute the test, but we have, um, our first error, which is name error and in initialize constant journal entry. And this is absolutely normal because we didn't create anything in the database yet. We didn't create the journal entry model. And so we're gonna just do it now and see how we progress um, in this test, right? So let me create the journal entry model by using the generator in Rails and with the fields day which will be a date field one which will be a string field two and field three all right so it created the model now i have to cr to to run the migration because when i create a model there is a migration for a database all right and now Let's rerun our test and see where we are. Oops. Um, the name journal entry is either already used in your application or reserved by Ruby and Rails. Mm. Hmm. That's. In oh yeah. Uh, okay. I was. Uh, I. I tried to create the model again. My bad. So. What we're trying to do is to run the test, actually. Um, and somehow it didn't recognize the journal entry model. And although it's here and it's something we have on, uh, in our app. So I think this is because um, the state of the so here when we do raise the, the, the um, database migrate we are usually um we are usually um affecting the development database and so maybe the test database has not been affected and so i'm gonna check that now by 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 checking the migration state status and I just need to tell that I want to check that for the test environment. So, yeah, we didn't actually create the data, the data, the migration. Sorry for the the test database. Um, so, if you remember before, we did create our database in here when we say there is DB uh, create. And it created the database for development and for testing. And then I created the journal entry and I did a migration, but um, apparently it didn't, it didn't create, um, it didn't run the migration for the test environment. So that's what I'm gonna do now. There you go. So we have, uh, a table that has been created but in our test environment and i would have 
um, assume that it will do that by default and maybe it does that if you have some option that is checked in but so yeah um, just to make it clear that there is um, two database when you're working in your local development uh, environment you have the development database that is the one that is that is used in your um, by default in your terminal um, in your console and when you run your app on the browser but if you're running tests uh, this is what the test database is for so sometimes you have to interact with it specifically with this parameter okay so now that we have our journal entries and um, our journal entry model in the test environment let's see what um, our test um, does um, and so again um, we have the same error and that's probably because um, the test environment is not detecting um, or is not listening to the to the models um, to the models folder and so I need to check um, how I can do that I'm pretty sure it's pretty simple and I've done it in the past but just don't can't remember it straight like this um, so so what we're gonna do is simply pass this in Google and type in air spec model because it's a model so I can probably find a solution pretty quickly um, in race one later at this to the top of each of your spec file yeah exactly so um, I didn't work for uh, with the rails test for a while I'm actually doing more front-end development lately but yeah in our test file we need uh, to specify the rails helper which is the configuration file for the test and this is the file that actually loads the environment and everything so if I add this line here it should work hopefully all right apparently we have something different perfect so now we have a different error and this error says that it's trying to visit uh, the index page here line 22 but there is a routing error so no root matches the this URL and so you can see how this is um, also a progressive process so it's just that instead of opening the browser and doing these steps in a browser you can do it directly in here with the test um, and it will basically show you the way and show you what you need to create in order to advance in your test so here what we need to do is to create a route to be able to visit this URL so let's go ahead and uh, create a route in our routes file so as you can see there's no routes at all so um, for that I can say that um, I need um, yeah I need to define a route and so obviously I will need to um, define a controller and an action this is what the syntax is for it says that when we visit the route it will use the index action in the articles controller but we don't have a controller for now and it will be a journal entries controller actually so but just to make sure that we're advancing I created the route but not the controller so technically what should happen is that the test should tell us that uh, we have a controller that is missing so it has been able to reach this page but no controller uh, has been specified or no controller exists to handle this route and 
And so, yeah, exactly what we have here, uh, it's still a ruling error, but it says that we have an initial, uh, an uninitialized constant journal interest controller. So it cannot find the journal interest controller. And we're just gonna create it right now. Um, actually, let me just add everything to Git. So we have the right coloring here uh, and not have everything uh, in green. I think I need to commit first, right? And now I think we're good. All right. So let's create the journals entries controller. And for that, I could create it directly in the root, but I usually it's better. And the convention is to create a folder and um, create. Um, actually, I, it's not the case. I, I just just got confused. Um, the best way is to create a controller like this, unless you have a namespace. So for example, if I had like um, slash dashboard slash journals entries controller uh, or slash journal entries, then I will have to add um, dashboard folder. But right now it's not the case. I can just create a journal entries controller at the root of controllers. Um, I could also uh, put it in a folder, but it, it will still be recognized, right? Um, so, and actually, the best way, the most easier way and more Rails way is to create it with the console itself. So I can say Rails generate controller journal entries, and we can add an action directly because we need the index action. And that will also create our views and it does uh, create um, some spec files um, and some other files but actually I don't want to create these files because we already have a spec file so what I'm gonna do is reverse this say rails destroy controller so that I can destroy all these files great and now I'm gonna say rails generate controller And I need to, um, so I want to skip these files and there's some options in Rails to do that. So I'm just gonna check the options here. It should give me the options. Um, actually it's not, or maybe, yeah, I should use help. Um, it's not telling me. Uh, so let me check on Google how to skip files in Rails generator. Uh, not existing files actually. Okay, so you, we could use a file like this. Um, or we can use this for example. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, this is this is great to have. Uh, this is great to have uh, in general. So uh, actually, I'm gonna use this. I can put this in uh, development.rb. Um, let's see if works so we want to generate this but we are skipping uh, the views which actually I don't want it to do I want to have the view but I want to skip the test framework the assets the helpers yeah all that so uh, great as you can see it only created the journal entries controller and the views uh, the view file. It also added the route, which I don't need because I'll be using the route, uh, the the root actually for this. So this is what generated. I don't need it because I already accessed this page in the root. 
um, right I don't have to type in this URL uh, so okay now we created our controller let me close all these files actually um, not the spec actually I need the spec um, Okay, and the controller. Just taking a few breaths. Um, always good. You can do the same. And so I have the drone lenders controller and the index action. And I want to see what my test says now. All right, perfect. See, I don't have any more um, error about the route not existing or like the um, controller not existing. And now, um, it actually was able to visit the page because it's not giving me any error about this line and now it has an er error in this line which is line 23 so it is on the page and it's having trouble finding the content date dot today um, so it's saying expect it to find text uh, with this date which is today's date in this page but it didn't that's why it's giving you an error it's giving us an error and that's completely normal because if we go check our file our view file well it's uh, just generated content we didn't actually um, tell the view to um, take whatever records are in that the database and show them as we did in our previous app and so that's why there's not no information about the entries that are supposed to be in the database right when the test is running in here it does go through this block so in the test database when it's here these entries do exist in the database the only thing is the view file doesn't show anything about entries in the database in fact if we go and visit it in our development environment well we're just gonna see this content right So what we need to do is um, loop, create a loop to um, our journal entries. And for that, I'm just gonna create a journal entries variable in the index action, which will take all journal entries, right? So this will be available in this variable. And so I can use this variable in my view because it's linked to this action to the index action and so I can use the each loop and and say that for each entry in the loop I want to display the um, rather journal entry I want to display the journal entry uh, date and I'll just write down uh, date before again we don't focus on the front end for now I will do videos later to 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 create like good looking front ends but now we're just focusing on Ruby on Rails and the back end um, and then um, what we can show as well is the other fields right so field 
on um, it's called field one right field one like this we have our second field oops third field and good so now um actually we don't need to use the equal here because otherwise it's going to show something we don't want to display so here in our development database we didn't create any journal entries so we won't see any journal entries but in our test database in our test we do create entries um, just uh, by specifying them here right we use the create um, actually record method on the model so they should be created and actually we don't have any error about creation here because we do visit the page and if we had uh, error about creation here we, we would not even be able to visit the page and so yeah now I think we should be able to have this test succeed because the page is ready to display this information just display um, the records that are in the database so let me run the test again oh so we still have an error and we have undefined method date for journal entry um, and yeah that's my bad because um the field of uh, the name of the field is day not date uh, maybe you've cached that actually and so all we need so this error uh, is here we not calling the right field so see that the test is actually running the view file because the error is here and he doesn't recognize the date field because it doesn't exist um, so if I replace it by day let's see what happens see there you go we don't have any error anymore and the test passed correctly um, so uh, yeah we know that we've created everything we need to be able to um, run this page and be able to uh, see the content and actually so so this this looks like it's less visual obviously it's less visual um, but you can see that the process is pretty straightforward and the test tells us every time what it's missing um, and so it's a uh, somehow of similar process of doing it uh, by yourself on the browser but I think it's a little bit better and um, it allows us to be more efficient uh, with their time and usually testing will always provide you with a, a faster development time and better code quality so yeah um, one last thing uh, because this is not visual, I still want to show you something uh, that will make uh, things make maybe more sense. Uh, we can, when the test is, ru is running, we can tell the test runner, which is a capybara in this, in this uh, occasion, capybara with airspec, the two gems that are running our tests. There are other gems that can run tests as well, but those ones I'm most familiar with. Um, we can tell the test suite to actually open the web browser so we can see what it's testing um, so I'm gonna try to do that now and so capybara open window uh, session open how do I open new window in capybara um,
Um, let me try this command um, here. Uh, I'll, I will need to change the driver, which is the, um, let's say the, the, the driver of the robot that is uh, actually doing the browsing on the page. Um, I think we could use this actually. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that can work. Oh, there you go. We have something. Um, but I don't know if it's waiting for something. Uh, maybe I need to use the headless version. Not sure. Again, it's been a while. I didn't use this, but um, uh, see, I think it was trying to open Google Chrome, but there probably there's probably some uh, permission error with the uh, Chrome on Mac OS. Um, but let's try the this driver, which is the Selenium Chrome headless. Um, Oh, see, it's trying to open something actually. Oh, I wonder if it's this. No. Oh, it did open something. Uh, it did open, but it was we couldn't notice it. Um, I think the best way would be actually. Um, we could maybe take a screenshot so we can see. Uh, Capybara takes screenshot. I think we can do that. Yeah, this can work as well. So what we can do is at the end, or rather when we visit the page, we can say, to uh, actually uh, open, save and open a screenshot of the current page um, instead of opening the, the, um, the browser in real time, which we can do, but uh, I'm having some trouble with, with it right now. But it's okay, let's try the screenshot. So is everything okay? Yes. All right, let's run the test. Um, so maybe we need to change a driver for that. So actually, let me use this driver and let's see. Okay, great. It actually saved, um, a screenshot here. So let's go and check it out. Um, it didn't open it because oh it needs the 
it says that it needs a launch gem to open the file automatically but we have the url here so we can just try it out and as you can see uh, this is the screenshot of um of um the our application in the test environment so when the um, the driver is um opening the browser in the test environment um for the sake of the test this is what it sees and this is exactly uh, the content of our database here in our test and yeah it's pretty cool to be able to see that and understand um, the state of the database and the state of the application in the test environment and how we're able to actually validate this um, accept these expectations uh, of the tests uh, you can see this content that we expect to have are actually here right this video tutorial go to the beach and the date of today is here so yeah um i hope you liked this video and this uh, um, test driven approach to building an application obviously we can add more features as we did in our previous tutorial or previous tutorials so adding new entries uh updating and deleting entries um but this gives you um an overview of how we can use testing to create applications so thank you for watching um, and see you on the next one. Bye.